Oh. <laughs> the map's not struggling to load in. This is the map. And it seems like here we are truly alone. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Beam NG Drive. And today we're going to be exploring another map from creator Spieler. The same creator as the last one we explored, Night Drive. However, this one is going to be a little bit different. And you'll understand why this entry screen is actually quite appropriate. See, uh, the last one focused on a night drive through a darkened forest. Well, this one focuses on a different kind of horror altogether. Uh, this one is actually going to be exploring liminal spaces. The setting may be different, but I am definitely interested in seeing how it plays out in this game. Because something that I learned from the last map is that in a situation like this, in a horror situation, especially in a vast setting, your car becomes your lifeline. You become attached to it in a way that makes you feel not only like you have more capability, but simultaneously like you could lose it in an instant. And that's a real scary feeling, and I wonder what that'll add to the liminal vibe. I mean, I'm used to exploring liminal spaces in these videos, but... I mean, what happens when those spaces are so much bigger and we're so much more likely to become disabled. One wrong turn, one misjudged gap, and that's all it takes. Liminal spaces. A state or place characterized by being transitional or intermediate in some way. Or any location that is unsettling, uncanny, or dreamlike. Well, what else is a roadway then, right? Graphic settings are already where they should be. I've turned the music up to max. And that helpful little blurb on the bottom left says none of which is copyrighted, which makes this very creator friendly. Uh, which makes sense considering it's made by a content creator. Uh, if you want to check out their BeamNG videos, I I've checked out their channel and it's like super cool and interesting to watch. Uh, this map in particular is only available on their Patreon. Uh, so if you want to try this for yourself, that link will be in the description. Let's get exploring. Oh wait, wait, wait. Uh, there's also there's also some vehicles we can choose from. Uh, sure. Yeah, one of these little '90s looking things could definitely be good for liminal exploration, right? Uh, let's see what this looks like. Yep, there's our liminal space exploration car. Let's see what it's like. Oh, we're going for this type of liminal space. But look! <laughs> it's like a field surrounded by corn, rather than the corn being the thing that goes in the middle. But wait, look at how that's layered. I mean, let's ignore all this other stuff for now. If you look at the way that's layered, it almost becomes clear that, like, that landscape, that sky that we see around us, it's just a wall. Like this whole thing is some kind of like Truman Show-esque dome. And it's only now that I really start to realize this is like almost Fulbright. These things dotting the landscape, it's almost like how a child at a daycare sees the playpen area. Well, let's cross this covered bridge and See what's over in this direction, I guess? Uh, I cannot see a thing, even with headlights. This whole... This whole neighborhood is like shrouded in shadow. Uh, so much for full bright. This is practically full dark. Uh, but even disconnected from any road, there's like... Street lamps overhead. Oh, this is so weird. Look at this. We're having to use our headlights, uh, illuminating the street as if it were nighttime and all their lights were out. 
and yet we're looking at a bright sky all around us, almost like there's nothing actually being cast, and the dome overhead is its own light source that doesn't emit anything. Hang on, wait, I'm gonna explore the back a little bit. And some of you had said that if I use the if I use the Alt N command, yes, I can actually get my own flashlight. I can't point it around, it stays at my own level, but here it is. There's something back here. Oh, that is so weird. Look at that. It's like all of these individual components make sense, but they don't make any sense together. And oddly enough, the toy box feeling of all this is contrasted by the presence of garbage back there. Like, you introduce that little imperfection, and suddenly it throws this whole insane place into question. And the road just turns straight into a brick wall, like I'm Wile E. Coyote or something going after the Roadrunner. Well, I'm famished. Uh, why don't we go have a look at uh, this diner over here? This diner whose architecture appears to have been AI generated. Oh, it's the kind of thing that looks normal until you get close and you realize no particular aspect makes any sense. Uh, the weird proportions, the way the sign is facing, the fact that uh, this window is like a full half story above everything else. And of course, we're not able to enter. When we're flush with the wall like this, we can see that it is indeed a wall. You can actually see the curvature of the earth. Take that, flat earthers. Let's keep looking around. The lighting is the thing that's freaking me out the most right now. Just a gray patch of picnic area in the middle of all this. Alright, what was over? <laughs> Okay, give me a second to put my heart back in my chest and just reverse. Okay, now that we're at a safe distance, what heck? That's just a pit, a crater in the middle of the dark area. You can't do that. That's against the rules. Even in a flat field, you've somehow managed to make me almost die. Dip. Yeah, you can say that again. Alright, we will save this for last. Oh good, an RV. Maybe there's someone there that can help me. And other hilarious jokes. And then again, the way it's pressed against the wall like that... It, actually, when we get close, we see just how impossibly high those fields are. Those... When we get here, we realize that's not even corn. It's just regular old grass. The way this thing is sitting, it makes me think that we can open that door and find the way out through there. Okay, please let me get away from there. I was stuck inside that stool for a moment. Huh, look at that attempt at camouflage. How weird is it? Like, look at this field. You wouldn't think I would need my brights on, but I do. All these things just, like, exist in a vacuum, which, you know, leads into what I was saying. It's almost like a toy box-esque feeling. Like, all the different model pieces have been laid out on the board, but the train set just hasn't been organized in any kind of coherent way. Can we hear any music from you? No such luck. That was like our one small comfort on the previous map. Uh, Alt N. It's constantly taking two ideas that, like, you know, not that they necessarily go directly into opposing each other, but that 
you just wouldn't see them in the same place. And when you do, you realize why it doesn't make sense. Oh, I see we've found stop signs migrating across Teletubby Hill. If anything, now I'm just hoping we don't encounter that horrifying vacuum cleaner thing. Well, we did it. What do we win? That makes a pretty sick slalom course, but beyond that... I'm not sure what there is for us. However, now from this height... Uh, I can see that there's a dock on the other side of the bridge that we crossed earlier. Uh, the music that's playing all around us, simultaneously eerie and calming. It really does feel like we've just been, like, put under a heat lamp in a room that's, like, meant to placate us. Years ago, when I first started doing this channel and played the map Schlepp's Liminal Space, I, I said that sometimes a liminal space can feel almost like a human habitat, you know? Like a lizard tank that we've been placed into, full of things that, like, some alien species would recognize as being human stuff without recognizing why any of these things exist in the first place. Can I jump into this boat? Well, I can. I'm not sure what happens if I end up in the water in this game. Alright, well, beyond the pit, that only leaves the fire watchtower. Let's just be real careful not to drive ourselves into the water. See, in this Fulbright map, I actually can't tell when my lights are on if it weren't for the indicator on the dash. And then suddenly we go into these darkly shaded areas and it's like, well, it's like we almost don't have enough light. Like I'm actually having a harder time penetrating this than in the previous map. All of these aspects, the lighting, the artificial nature of this, it comes together to create a very strange, like, sense of perspective. It makes it very hard to gauge where you are. Oh, we can climb this, oh, but only to an extent. It makes it very hard to gauge where you are in relation to things, the actual size of this place, and we are stuck. Oh, this is so weird. Actually, from that hill, you can see that the lighting that hits the ground is actually more like a spotlight. Wait, I haven't even... That's exactly what it is. Oh my, the sun is acting as a spotlight. It's basically artificial. I mean, not like that comes as a surprise, but somehow that seems so much worse when the stars abandon you and not just the Earth. Okay, well, I guess that just leaves the dip then. Little as I really want to. Question is, do we slowly try and slide down, or do we Thelma and Louise this thing? There's, There must be maybe a teleporter somewhere, and I'd be willing to bet... Oh, it's at the bottom of this crevice. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, I'm actually quite confident in that now. Oh my god, this is like a religious experience. Look at the... We're okay. Oh, that was a terrifying moment where I was like looking around the cabin and I could see like the light moving around. Uh, imagine feeling your stomach drop in that moment. Of feeling like you're being lifted up off the seat. Oh my... Okay, this map's got experiences for us. And we're right back into something that seems just a bit familiar, doesn't it? Okay, let's stick with the road for now. I mean, it's all we've got, right? Then again, maybe not. There is an ominous red glow in the distance, and even though these street lamps don't appear to be lit themselves, 
they nonetheless cast a lit shadow. Oh, look at this driving by red light. Oh, this is so cool. So, like, the last one was more of a... Well, well, not a conventional, but straightforward horror narrative. This one is much more surreal, uh, taking the advantage of the idea to be much more creative. Who am I kidding? The last one was pretty creative as well. Certainly wasn't something I'd ever seen before. Certainly didn't predict its outcome. A red glowing church off the side of the rural road. What could go wrong? Well, I guess one way or another, I am here to be saved. Oh, this is so creepy. Hang on, just uh, setting things up in case I want to use this as my thumbnail. Oh, would that give too much away? I guess we'll just have to wait and find out. Look at this. It's, given the remote nature and the fact that it's clearly highlighted for me, but totally dark inside the windows, it makes me think that uh, there's a million crammed together eyes, all people jammed in there like sardines, and staring out at the newcomer, the interloper. Well, let's see what's at the end of this, although... I can't shake the feeling that maybe there's more to explore out in this dark expanse. Actually, I can see that there are silhouettes further down the road, so there must be something. Wee-woo. This is definitely a wee-woo moment if I ever saw one. Looks like a restroom. Then perhaps that's a gas station all the way down there, but it's like a dream. I'm being beckoned. Well, like a dream or being guided into the light, but... And again, I can't recall a heavenly image that was a red light. Oh, this gas station is different from the other one. This one looks actually pretty run down, although it does have a light on. Oh, and our flashlight is working much better here. All the pumps are gone, and yet there's like an electric rattling coming from inside. This is so strange. That's a weird looking door. <laughs> like I'm gonna knock on it and the the cover is gonna slide away to reveal some shifty looking figure who sees that I'm not who he's waiting for and immediately slides it back. The thing is, on both this map and the previous one, coming to a place that seems like it might have people in it, but having no one inside or coming to the door makes me feel shut out. Like, they want nothing to do with me, like I'm doing something that's inviting trouble, or they're just waiting for the trouble to take me. I can never tell when I've got the parking brake on. It's probably an indicator on the dash somewhere, but I don't know what it is. Oh wow, when you're speeding directly towards it... You realize that uh, objects in the distance may be farther than they appear. Which, you know, I mean, the word distance is in there, but even still. <laughs> Look, the way the beam sort of separates down the middle of the road. Have you been waiting for me? Spieler, I don't know if you watch my channel, but something like that kind of makes it seem like it, because that is a very specific fear of mine. Well, this is 
cheerier at least. Actually, cheerier is the wrong word. Blender Nightmare is more like. Uh, this is sort of adopting the imagery of the pool rooms, but uh, definitely putting its own spin on it as it opens up hugely and shows that it's not a pool, it's an ocean. Remedy, please don't sue. Oh, but we've got areas beneath. We can take a ramp upwards or explore the pillars underneath. Oh, it's like some kind of water world version of a parking garage. I, I think that's one of the bigger horrors of these, like, bright open pool rooms. It's the idea that you almost feel like you're in some kind of like 3D modeling software. Everything is so pristine, so reflective. Um, look, my car is uh, really struggling to drive in two feet of water. But I'm seeing some things over here. I'm looking at this and all I'm thinking is the inventive shapes my car would be crushed into if I could manage to hit these pillars at speed. Oh, it's not just a parking garage. It's a water park. Look, those are slides. All right, I have a feeling I'm gonna have a much easier time with this place on foot. So let's put it there and see, can we actually go down these things? Well, we'll probably have to get up there to manage that. And it looks like the spiral ramp is probably for me, and the regular ramp is for cars. Uh, but I'm going to take this level by level. Imagine this, multi-level exploration in a vehicle. There's something over here I want to see first. Man, I cannot even break 25 miles an hour down here. So in order to get over there, I've got to climb up this precariously rounded, narrow surface. What's to lose in going for a challenge? Answer, I don't think it's going to be able to make it, so there's that. Reverse, and let's go. Sorry, I wouldn't have tried that normally, but I didn't want to look like a—I didn't want to look like a square in front of the map creator. Yeah, but it seems this does not actually lead to that platform. It's simply into the wall. Imagine if the back of the RV just leads into a tunnel that runs through this thing and terminates in a dead end. I'm hearing seagulls. Hearing them, but not seeing them. Thus adding to the idea that the back rooms are sort of a, a weird mishmash, a, a crude imitation of certain aspects of reality. It's sort of, I use air quotes around the word nose, enough to put sort of similar ideas together, but not what any of them mean. It's almost like AI generated artwork, but as a place and, well, I guess this idea was around before AI art was common. Hang on, there's something in the corner over there. A house. A full-on two-story house beneath this half-submerged parking garage looking thing. Uh, a house which we will see in three to five business days. Wait. Okay, I can see that the water is flowing, but it's really making me nervous that only now we're able to hear, like, splashing noises. I mean, in this housing market, I'll take it. Let's have a look around the outside. Is there maybe anything wedged in the very back corner? This is so weird, though. It's like it took a design that it had 
<laughs> but just stretched an existing texture, the only texture, all over it. it. It's so weird in liminal spaces when you see something that's sort of like in the shape of something familiar, but still isn't that thing. I guess you could define a lot of the experience that way. Something simultaneously is and isn't something familiar. But in another three to five business days, we'll be over to this ramp and get upstairs. Take one down, pass it around, zero row bottles of beer on the wall. Yep, it really did take that long. I don't think the car's getting up those stairs, but as we put the nose down, we gotta make sure we don't accidentally overshoot it and go over the edge there. Yeah, only we can make it to the top. Oh, that's a shame. I was really looking forward to uh, to trying to drive a car through a tube down the water slide. I suppose this is also emulating dream logic in that, you know, it, it's very harsh and abrupt in its transitions. Literally teleports, so, you know, one second you're doing one thing with one set of concerns, and uh, the next it's an entirely different set. The one common thread is us and our vehicle. No matter what, we're always driving. Look. It's like a whole toy box resort complete with Lego Island trees and Mario mushrooms in the distance. Oh, well, here we are. And... Wow. Huh. This is... Oh, never mind! I was going to say it's behaving the exact opposite of how a water slide behaves, but... Uh, this is certainly doing it. Well, that was fun. Actually, really fun. Even in spite of the flat screen, it still churned my stomach a bit, but... Now I've got to walk back up there. Just kidding, I'd do what I want. Oh, look, we even left, like, skid marks coming up this thing. Uh, now I feel bad. We're actually, like, hang on. I, I, I had hit replace current. Exhaust damage. What do you mean, exhaust damage? Uh, going over this hill is not this thing's strong suit. Oh, well, at least it delivered us to our old one, so that solves that problem. We're really polluting the landscape, though. We are not a good guest at this resort. Uh, let's make sure we take this going fast enough so we don't get caught. Oh, look at that. Not only is this pool huge enough to require the use of its own lighthouse, but what's actually really freaking me out is the image of all of these, like, perfectly parallel beach chairs just stretching off. There's like a hundred of them. Everyone who looks at it will be weirded out by a different feature. Like, there'll be one thing that stands out the most to a given person. This place certainly isn't helping the toy box perception. Let's just carefully maneuver our vehicle under the skylights in between the hot tubs. You there. We hadn't seen much so far, but perhaps these back rooms do feature entities. I... I don't know about you, ever since I was a child, I have never trusted rubber duckies. I mean, look at that face. There's just something so cold and dead about them. The way they just bob there when you're in the water. It's just... sinister. I can't think of a better word than sinister. Let's get out of here. I don't like the way it's looking at me. Oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> it's like a poor man's decal. I didn't realize that could be a thing, but the lighthouse is actually reflecting on our hood. Oh, this game is so crazy. I've got to mess around with it more for just, like, the sandbox features. Uh, but right now, I'm hoping this ramp can take us up high enough. 
that we won't have to worry about that spiral staircase. It will not. Ooh, but we've found something else in the meantime. Definitely, definitely not car friendly architecture. Definitely really not. Huh, I see. You've got your own private resort back here. Well, uh, I suppose I'll just leave you to it then. Maybe the other one was the bouncer. Just look at this. Just look at this image. It's eerie, it's liminal, it's goofy. It looks like it came out of somebody's architecture documents folder all in one. Alright, if we swing around here and don't get too much of the sun in our eyes... Uh, ow, ow. Uh, messed up our bumper there. Uh, it looks like there is actually a ramp that'll take us to the top of this slide. Ow, this, this whole area is just making me spawn in new cars like crazy. Look at that, just a wall of reflective white. I have no idea what's in front of me. I honestly wasn't sure if I was looking at more tiled structure or if I was looking at uh, at the sky. There we are. There's the green slide. Which one is crazier? Well, it looks like we're actually probably on top of the yellow slides. Yeah, we can't get in there from here. But where's our destination then? Well, I mean... I know where my destination is. Come on, we can do it. We can do it. We can do it! We can't do it. We're stuck. We're very, very stuck. In the meantime... We... We, sir. Oh, I almost got jump-scared by that, but that's just my bumper that we launched down the tube. Oh, well, I'm sure some kid will find it with his feet. Oh, wow, this is, like, disturbingly long. I gotta wonder, were these props, like, in the game? Or are they, like, custom models or mapping that was done? Either way, when you're, like, twisting and turning in one of these things, like, wow, you really do quickly lose your sense of direction. I have no idea which way I'm facing. But with a little bounce, we slide right out. What are you? Look, somehow the shadow it casts makes it feel so much more unnatural than everything else. Oh. An arrow? An arrow pointing toward the slide? Or this pillar that it wraps around? Yeah, this thing really wants to pull to the left ever since I slammed it headfirst into a water slide. Oddly enough, that thing tanked it a lot better than the car did. But I'm wondering if there's not... Look, <laughs> the way you poke out from the side when we take it from this angle? Like, soon. Uh, oh, it's so hard to see anything! Well, 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 well... Well, oh, there goes that. I, I can't tell if we're making any progress with this. Doesn't seem like we did. There's another one of you right here. You weren't here before. I'm actually kind of starting to think that maybe you're like the vehicle that counts as the player model? Let's try getting up here and joining the club. I should have known. Oh, but this is something entirely different. Just a foggy field. Wait, and what is... 
there's something on the ground here. We're being lit. Oh, look. Oh, there's like shadows of like gargantuan structures uh, appearing on the edge of the fog. Oh, that is horrifying. It like reminds me of the, uh, of the remake of War of the Worlds or something. Okay, how do I turn off these arrows? <laughs> uh, the Forbidden Hot Wheels ramp. I will not be attempting that one. Right, let's put our lights on so we can make out like details and textures. But let's just drive around aimlessly and see what we find. Even if there's nothing in this direction, I'm still curious because I wonder if there's not perhaps like an edge to this. Oh, we should be careful though and ready to stop because this map has demonstrated a willingness for the edge to be just that. Ah uh, yes, lead me right into a wall, blue arrows. I don't know what you're trying to do or why you appeared, but now that you're here, could you at least do something useful? I mean, I see something over there as well. Let's keep an eye out all around us. Is that where we came from? No. No, no, no. There's stuff all over. And look. Ah, oh, God's weightlifting kit. Actually, it has a pretty similar texture to the destroyed ruins that we saw in the cave in Night Drive. Oh, it forms like a triangle with edges connected by, like, ball joints. I'm just seeing- I'm just seeing these structures in the fog all over the place and it's really freaking me out. This is actually kind of reminding me a little bit of, uh, of trying to explore GM Ash Pit. A lot of GM Ash Pit. Okay, so there are some things out here. I mean, like, imagine being in this situation. You're just on a long road trip, and... Well, next thing you know, you're driving on a plane like this. Fog and odd structures occasionally within it. But other than that, it's just miles and miles of nothing. No idea how you got here, no idea how to leave. Yep, here's another Forbidden Hot Wheels ramp. Ooh, wait. Hang on, this is, um, kind of, okay, curves like that. Something about that image there was, like, making me completely lose, like, all sense of the space in front of me. Like, I had no idea if I was about to crash into something or drive into a dip. You know, look at that. It just, like, twists and turns around itself. Uh, I, I could climb on right here, but I don't think I'd be able to maintain the speed to do this properly. Whoa, 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 whoa! I thought that was like me getting close to the edge, and then I realized that's not the sky. Boy, there's something. No, 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 no. We were closer than I thought. Huh. Okay, we've gone from normal regular old liminal spaces to something more akin to Nassant's E. But I've got to say, <laughs> I'm feeling the urge to hit the gas. This is actually pretty satisfying to drive through in that like a glove kind of feeling, you know? And this one's just a half pipe. Ah, uh, Tony Hawk would love this. 
Actually, this kind of reminds me a little bit of my custom maps in Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. Also, how crazy is it that a PS1 game had a map editor? That game was so much fun. Kind of creepy, too, actually. Like, I, I feel like those PS1 Tony Hawk games do have the necessary ambiance to qualify as, like, nostalgically creepy. No freaking way. No friggin' way I have bad experiences with this creator in caves. This also seems like a likely candidate for the map exit. I don't know if I've seen everything. Well, it's kind of hard to know if I've seen everything in a place like this. Tell you what, I'll, I'll drive to the far end of this, and if I don't find anything, I'll turn around and go in. How weird is that? In the middle of all of this, a parking lot, and nothing to accompany it. A very hostile to drivers parking lot as well. Oh, that is so weird. And there's something off in the fog over there. This map is doing, like, such cool things. Like, uh, things I hadn't even considered. But what's also really interesting about it is how it's not just doing liminal space imagery. It's doing it in such a way that can only really be explored in a car. And that's an angle that I just haven't seen done before. It's exactly what I was hoping for. An immersive and realistic driving experience. Planned features, career with missions and demolitions. Is this just an ad for BeamNG? Mod support? <laughs> well, we've seen the ends of that, and what I imagine is probably this map in editor. Oh, wow. <laughs> what an effort to make me feel at home in my usual uh, places created by Hammer. Hang on, there's something over this way as well. Wait, how did- but I came from over there! Oh, this is- this is a different board. Highly detailed, handcrafted environments? Mod support, create maps and vehicles, in-game terrain editor! And Lewis scripting. Well, let's see what's awaiting us in the Cave of Doom. Uh, again, knowing that it's this creator who is perfectly willing to have this basically be an Alaskan bullworm that'll digest me at the end of its gullet. Uh, if we can build up the necessary speed to get ourselves up and over that lip, wow. How car unfriendly. Yep. Yeah, don't worry about it. Insurance will pay for it. Insurance meaning my infinite supply of whatever vehicle I want. Oh, we're in this mode again, are we? Oh, our bumper is red? Ask me if I care. Don't slide, don't slide, don't slide. Eh. Well, we can try to make our way around here as a challenge, but what I'm thinking is that, uh, we need to go towards the light. That light emanating from the abyss below. <laughs> and hope that the next leap will be the one home. Yeah! Not home. Not home at all, and what is that sound? Oh, it's like being inside a dollhouse in the attic of a haunted mansion. Oh, it's... It's the sound of the lights overhead, but look! Look at the way they fade off behind us. By the time we reach one light, we can't even see the previous one. Oh, 
Oh, look, look the way the taillights illuminate the dark tunnel behind us. We can't even see the light that we just passed. Hey, howdy. I mean, I could totally imagine just staying here forever. Look at that. That is nightmare fuel. It's weird. I, I feel so unsafe here, and yet it, it almost feels like a port in the storm. Like, here is the only source of comfort that I have to cling to. Even more so than my car. But I feel like we've got to get moving. I don't like seeing those shadows move across the walls like that. I know it was my doing, but... Uh. Times like this, I'm glad that this isn't Gary's mod, and I know I can't open those tall, thin doors. But wait, I can see something, what looks like a small amount of light coming through, like, window panes. There's gotta be something, but I did feel something load, it feels like. Uh, this is- okay, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. I feel like the end is going to sneak up on me. The, it's so weird going down what looks like a hallway, but then you look down at the speedometer and it says 80. My brain does not like that disconnect. Staring out through the lines in the rear window somehow makes it so much worse. Here it's like the wall is coming apart. And we can see like the mesh of rebar beneath. It's like the it's like the wallpaper starts to like peel and sag here. Like it's exposing the cracks, almost like it was trying to look friendly at first. And now that we're this deep, it almost doesn't care to try anymore. This almost feels like an extension of the cave. Oh look, stains appearing on the ground, light spewer and farther between. It's deteriorating as we go. But at this point, we've come so far, there's no turning back. Uh, why does the light sound so much angrier in this spot? Feels like I'm running a roadblock blowing through that. Okay, go, 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 go. <laughs> it's literally my job to go back and confirm what that was. Howdy. Howdy, sir. Oh, look, there's a smiley here to, to let me know that I'm in good company. Maybe it heard what I said about it abandoning the charade, but then again, maybe it doesn't care. Think about how far this is. Think about how fast we've been moving. Think about if we had come here without a car. but it just passes. We've got to get lights on. Getting out is the worst thing ever. You're a clown. I get it, you've got the yellow frilly hair and the red polka dot shirt. It's a clown. The way the car lights this environment is somehow the worst part. It's worse than any of the flickering, staticky, awful lighting that was back there. Knowing that I am the only source of light, and when this thing runs out of gas or the battery dies, that is it. Uh, 
I gotta take it slower though. Like my instinct is to just hold down the gas. But that is unmistakably blood. Okay, let's creep forward. There's the occasional door that we could never hope to open. Oh no, please don't open up. Please just be wider at the end. Thank you. Oh my god, I thought... Literally the worst thing you could do to me right now is have me make my way all down the miles of that. Only to then be presented with a fork. Oh, that would have been horrible. But we are presented with one more hole to fall down. And really, what's one more? Well, we could get stuck again. That could happen. I'll tell you what we could do, right? is spawn something absolutely huge, you know, like a SWAT van or something like that. Replace current, and maybe we'll just, like, fall in? No, it finds itself in much the same position. Oh, wait, maybe we can do something! Ow! That's something may not have... In what I wanted. Uh, oh god, it's like just bright red. It's like the whole thing is illuminated by some kind of flare. I can hear the buzz of an electric light, but it's nowhere to be found. Something about that like harsh red lighting just instills such a visceral sense of panic, like like the meteor's coming and this is the end. I mean, it's run the whole gamut of just off-kilter to weirdly eerie to strange but beautiful all the way up now to outright horrifying. Why am I getting such Blair Witch vibes from this place? That door is open. Oh 
Oh, there is an interior. There's that source. Hang on. But we cannot get behind the front door. It's just cracked open as if we're meant to be invited in. Or if we're following in the footsteps of someone who came before. I just got jump scared by the blue arrows on the ground. We can hide in its shade, which actually, in this context, almost does provide some small measure of comfort. Oh, what are you? Just like some kind of power infrastructure, like a transformer in a cage? Gives me the impression that if I could just get in there, I could shut this whole thing down, but do I really want to? Do I really want to leave myself in darkness? Wait, come on, I keep hitting the wrong button. Doesn't help that I can hardly tell if my headlights are doing anything. Oh, look. A grocery store. Constantly taunting me with what I can't have. Knowing that even if I did manage to break in, none of it is real. Now this is a weird structure. And like one of those rental cabins campsites will charge you for. Actually, the shape of it is sort of reminding me of GM Canada. Or GM Canada Forest. And again, it's the safest looking place we've seen here. But I haven't found any way out. Wait, is that something new over there? It's just off to the side of the motel. Yep, more cabins. So it's trying to lead us to the middle. Oh, I see. I had set a waypoint. All right, so that's how I could have gotten rid of it. But look, we're seeing... We're seeing some light leak out here, so maybe that's what we need to do. Maybe that'll help us. Ow. Okay, so we're not... We're not leaving this way. I'm actually really proud of how closely I was able to navigate just on one turn. But we are not getting out this way. Now let's survey the damage. Oh yeah, we are in a bad way. Look at that. We can even see our headlight hanging off and flapping. Yeah, I'm gonna assume at this point that this is probably the end. Because I've been driving around for a while and I cannot find anything else that would make me think that there's some kind of exit to this. And meaning this is our fate, our punishment for curiosity. But this was really cool. Like, it, it really captured, like, a huge variety of different feelings. But it did so in a way that didn't feel like too much of a mishmash. It actually felt like there was kind of an appropriate progression. And that's, like, really, really cool. Not to mention, it was using the liminality concept, but even though there were a few, like, tried-and-true sort of visuals, it's also doing a lot of original things, and a lot of things that I feel can really only be done in a vehicle. Like, it's not just jumping on the bandwagon of liminal spaces being popular, it's actually bringing it to BeamNG in a way that feels fitting. Honestly, this creator has, like, so many of the right ideas, I think, when it comes to horror. It's all things that, like, you know, aren't necessarily conventional, and yet still just sort of work. Work in the space of, like, being a horror story, work in the space of the medium that it's being presented in, and still managing to be something that can be followed even without words. Oh, wait, whoa, wait, whoa, wait, whoa, wait. I am seeing something new over here. Anything for something new. This has got to be a teleporter. Oh, wait! It's not a teleport, it's a corner! 
Oh, my, my brights were on. Look, it's a gap in the wall. A leap of faith, and we use we use the spaces between to make our way to the next ones. Almost like there's invisible streetlights hovering above us. Oh, this map's not over yet. Oh, we're a little worse for wear. This car is taking some nasty hits into the sides, but. Uh, she'll get us through for now. Uh, we, we, we've got to be looking around in all directions or we might miss something. Uh, there's dark walls obstructing our view. It's like we're blindly feeling our way down a hallway, but in a car. Uh, is this what blind people feel like when they drive? Honestly, in a situation like this, without looking at the speedometer, I have no idea how fast I'm going. And that thought terrifies me. I mean, the car may be a safety bubble, but uh, I'm constantly thinking in the context of uh, what I might be missing all around me. But it seems likely that we've reached the end of the road. That was horrifying. This has been quite a scary road, and the scariest road of all was none at all. There we are. And we now once again find ourselves alone. No. Alone. Well, sort of alone. I thought I had seen something over in this direction. Ow! Well, a wall, and now our radiator is leaking. This is completely blinding, and I have no idea how to tell where I am. Let's check this again. Now we're inching closer to a wall. Not like I'd know. We're in purgatory. <laughs> Thank you for playing. Thank you for making. This was so cool. Once again, on one of your maps, I've sort of given my closing thoughts a bit prematurely. But everything I've said still applies, plus a little more, I suppose. Let's hope this is a teleport, and one which brings us right back here. Uh, once again, really, really cool experience, and I, I highly recommend you guys try this out. And I I'll definitely, in the future, see if there's any other cool, like, horror maps for this game. Because you guys know me, I'm a huge fan of driving horror, and, and now I've seen that this game is very open to players, and, well, like any game that's very open to players, very open to creativity and really, like, off-the-wall stuff. But look, I'm gonna... Before I give my outro, I'm gonna do something we haven't really done in the previous one. This game's a physics playground. Let's play with some physics. Alright, into... Into Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I can't remember what they called it, but let's go into a third-person view so we can get the best possible view of this. Demolition Derby in the back rooms. Yep! Oh, God, that is so satisfying to look at. This is the kind of thing that I, as a kid, would have dreamed about games being able to do. We're stranded now, and something tells me we're not going to have OnStar coverage out here, but if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this map out for yourself, you can subscribe to the creator's Patreon, which I will link in the description. Uh, their YouTube channel will also be in the description. Uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.